Now, the dog sled ride was part of a tour we took to Churchill, Canada to see the polar bears. The kennel, if, if that's what you call a place that keeps and trains sled dogs, was about a 15 minute drive out of Churchill. They have over 30 dogs, all of them of a mixed breed. Now first they assembled us in a heated tent and we were told about the importance of the sled dogs to the fur trade and how the native people moved off the land and into the cities when the fur trade died. Then we were introduced to the head trainer and musher whose ancestors used sled dogs in the fur trade. Just before we all go outside and have a very quick safety talk, and then we're gonna get started with the first ride. All right. Okay guys, a little bit on how we uh, train our sled dogs. You know, it's not very difficult for us here because look, we have a lot of older dogs. And when I say older dogs, I mean five to seven, eight year old dogs that we have. And these are our more experienced dogs. So what we do when we have a litter of puppies, where we bring in a young dog, we get them to run with our older, more experienced animals, okay? And they train our puppies for us. Works very well. When a puppy misbehaves, the older dogs tell them that that behavior is not acceptable and uh, they better smarten up <clears throat> or they will be disciplined, okay? Now, disciplining our dogs, we don't hit, kick, or punch our dogs here, okay? They don't understand that language. All that does to them is makes them afraid of you, okay? When you go to stick out your hand, they don't know, are you going to pet me or are you going to hit me this time, right? So we don't do that. The way we train our, uh, discipline our puppies, our dogs, the whole kennel, is if you guys ever saw a mom with a litter of puppies, and the way she disciplines them is she actually starts growling at the pups when she first uh, is going to train them, right? And if they don't listen, then she'll bite them. She'll grab hold of them with her mouth and give them a good bite and make them cry. And then she growls at them and tells them that, you know, that the bad behavior is not accepted. And that they understand. So after mom's bitten the puppies a few times and growled, all she has to do when the puppies are being bad is just growl at them. And then they'll, uh oh, mom's upset. <laughs> Better change my behavior, right? So when we discipline the dogs, we do the same thing. The only thing is, I don't growl at them. I just keep on just <laughs> I just tell them what their bad behavior is and they better stop. If they don't stop, then they'll get disciplined. The way I do that is I take the dog, put him on the ground, grab him around the snout and the collar, and I give him a bit of a shake and I tell him, bad dog, stop your bad behavior. And then I bite their ear. Okay? The reason I bite the ear is because I can't fit my mouth around their head. <laughs> right? And they're very sensitive, so you don't have to bite it very hard. But you want to bite hard enough so that they cry, same as when mom disciplined them, right? Then they realize, uh oh, I just been disciplined. And that they understand, right? Now, after I've done that a few times, all I have to do is change my tone of voice. And you'll see the dogs respond. Now, having said all that, when we first go to hook up the dogs, they all go wild, they go crazy. You're not really going to control them at that point, so we allow them to let off some energy, some steam, and just be crazy for a while. But then once we start working, they settle down and they start doing their jobs. Okay? And it works very well for us. In the kennel, there is no hierarchy. All the dogs are kept at the same level. The way I do that is I fix 99.9% .9 of our females and probably 60% of the males are fixed. We only have one female that, that we can breed. And the dogs, they know when they're being bad. Yeah, they, they're just like a bunch of kids. Yeah. And um, so we have to stay on top of them. You know, there's some behaviors, if you let them get away with it, it becomes just a bad habit for them. Right? So we try and keep them very well uh, trained when they're doing <laughs> You're in the sled. Now your partner's going to sit down right in front of you. So when you do sit down, please make sure that your knees are spread apart so that you're, when your partner sits down, they're not sitting on your kneecaps. So I'm going to show you what they mean because I know it's a bit confusing. The, all right. All right. So I'm gonna. I'm not gonna him from this side. Cause we're always getting in from this side. We're all getting in on the right okay, side. Okay, holding onto the bar. Try not to step on your friend's 
anatomy. <laughs> there you go. Just like so. Okay? And then cover up. All right? Okay. So I do have brakes back here in case something happens where I have to stop the dogs. All right? Because when the dogs are running down the trail, they don't put up their hand and say, hey, i got to go to the bathroom. They just stop on a dime and just, uh, yeah, do their business. So we have to get the sled stopped because we don't want to run them over while they're doing their business, okay? All right. Okay, just right behind these pylons here. Keegan, with the lights on, the lights on the shed are on. All right. Okay. Alors, c'est comme Okay, everybody. Behind the The ride was a bit scary because it was in total darkness. Our musher almost never put on his headlamp. I guess the dogs can see in the dark. The sled's runners did smooth out some of the bumps in the snow as we went through the forest. The ride was about 10 minutes long. It was a loop that brought us back into the starting point. and they had a cover that kept us warm inside the sled. I think that weight was supposed to keep the dogs lined up properly.
know, I was surprised that only five dogs could pull us so easily.